I welcome you to St. John's United Church. This, of course, is our YouTube service that we offer to people that may not be able to attend church at this time still because of COVID and, and just feeling uncomfortable or whatever reason you might have. We do hope that it helps you in your, in your life and in your faith. Please do share this with others if you think it would be helpful for them as well. We do want to offer the love of God to all people. May the Lord bless you this day. Peace be with you. Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will, for you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm chapter 8 O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, 
whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Genesis chapter 2 and verses 18 to 24. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, and to the birds of the air, and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. James chapter 5 and verses 13 to 20. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world, about which we are speaking, to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. The Holy Gospel of Mark, chapter 10 and verses 13 to 27. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, 
Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you know the goat? Perhaps I need to be a little more specific. Do you know who the goat is in hockey, golf, basketball? If you don't know for sure who the goat is, do you have an opinion on it? Maybe some of you are wondering what that term goat even refers to. Goat is an acronym for the greatest one of all time. The greatest one of all time, the goat. Now that you know what that term means, I suspect you may have an opinion, at least on some of the sports I mentioned. Humans, we we seem to have uh, this love to figure out who is the best at something. I do that a lot myself. But I'm not quite sure why it's that important. Does it really matter who is the greatest hockey player of all time? It's Gordie Howe, by the way, in case you didn't know. Sorry to the 99 fans. 
Does it matter if Jack Nicklaus is or isn't the greatest of all time? Tiger Woods is good, maybe second best. What about tennis? Some of us even try to figure out who is the greatest chess player of all time. I think it's personally the one current one, the current champion at the moment, but only time will tell. There are even people, believe it or not, who try to figure out the greatest preacher of all time. Sorry, I have to tell you this again. A, a few months ago, I did a really great sermon. I, I thought so. After recording it, I went home and said to Lorraine, that's my wife, I said, do you, do you know how many great preachers there are left in the world? Without missing a beat, she said, one less than you think, dear. One less than you think. I have changed the lectionary reading slightly this week in regard to the gospel message. The lectionary was Mark chapter 10 verses 2 to 16, while I chose Mark chapter 10 verses 13 to 27 as our reading. I chose to do this because after quite a bit of research, trying to determine what Jesus meant when he says you must be like little children to enter the kingdom, I came to the conclusion that the gospel writer was trying to make a point by putting the story of the rich young ruler right after the part of the reading about little children. I came to that conclusion because I think both stories relate to status. The first relates to the status of children. Children did not, and sometimes still don't in places and in some families, have a high status. They were looked down upon. On the other hand, the rich young ruler is about a man with status and wealth, the exact opposite to a little child. And though Jesus loves the rich young ruler, he walks away from Jesus when the demand, as he saw it, was at too great a cost. Just like trying to figure out who the goat is, we are more occupied sometimes with trying to be important, to have status and wealth, than we are about being like children or learning what that means, about those who aren't so important. It's the same with Jesus' disciples. Don't worry if you fall into this too. It is apparent this story is about status for two reasons. First, if you look at Matthew's account of this statement, it's in chapter 18, you will see that it begins by the disciples arguing about who is the greatest among them. And the Gospel of Mark, as we read, notes that the disciples tried to turn the children away. Obviously, they didn't think children were that important. Don't bother the master, he's too important for this. But of course, like in many things, Jesus turns their thinking on its head. Not only does he say to let the little children come unto me, but says that the kingdom of God belongs to them and to people that are like them. Children had little status in Jesus' time and culture. As I noted, sometimes we still see that. Children must be seen but not heard. So what if this story is about status? That is, it is truly telling what we must be like to enter the kingdom of God. We must be like little children coming with nothing to follow Christ. Wouldn't that really, wouldn't that really change the way we look at others in the world and, and how we treat them? What makes one person better than another? Is it what we own? Our wealth? Our C CEOs who make millions more important or better than the workers in the same company who make perhaps minimum wage? Is it what we know that makes us a better person than others? Because someone may be extremely smart and intelligent, does that make them better? Does it make them more likely to enter the kingdom of heaven? What about beauty? Because someone may be beautiful or good looking, does that make them a better person? I read this just recently and it's, it's not exactly this, I didn't have it with me, but something like this. I don't like ugly. I'm not talking about physical appearance, I am talking about the heart. I don't like an ugly heart, a dark heart. Often, what we value most in this life, if not by our words and by our actions, is what Jesus turns on its head. If we really value wealth and status as the important matters in life, Jesus says, we're wrong. That's not what is most important. You may be rich and young with lots of status, but that won't get you into the kingdom of heaven. Rather, be like children who have no status. They regularly seek a blessing 
Children want to be near the people they love and receive their love, but offer nothing for that blessing. They come to the source of life and hope to them, knowing, seeking, but having no pretensions, at least when they're very young. They have no pretensions about deserving or earning this blessing. And neither should we. We should have no pretensions about us deserving the love and blessing of God. I think we know. Deep inside, I think all of us know. We have failed to live up to who we could have been. I have. We may have status in the eyes of others. We may have wealth. We may have intelligence or beauty or both. But we, I do, do you? We have not lived up to our full potential. I have not lived up to my full potential. So have you come to Jesus like that rich young ruler, seeking to know the secret of eternal life and to gain it? What have you come with? The rich young ruler came with wealth and status, and after looking at him, Jesus loved him and told him he was doing well by keeping the commandments, but there was just one more thing he had to do. He had to take all that wealth, sell it, and give it to the poor, then follow Jesus. And he couldn't do it. He walked away, shocked, we are told, shocked and grieving. Why? Because he was wealthy. He was shocked at such a great cost and grieving, I suspect, because he really did want eternal life. There is a saying of St. Augustine I have always liked. If you believe what you like in the gospel and reject what you like in the gospel, it is not the gospel you believe, but yourself. How many times have I done this? How many times do you do that? We really do want eternal life. You really do want that, don't you? I know I do. And Jesus loves you. He he wants to give you this. But there may be just one thing holding you back. There is one thing. It may not be wealth or status. But there's just one thing you can't let go of. You think, and, and I've experienced this one. You think if you let it go, You will lose being who you really are, your true self. There is something in you that you think defines you. But the truth is you won't lose yourself. The truth is that if only you would let that go, you would find your true self in Christ. You would find that the Heavenly Father has loved you since before your birth, while you were in the womb, and was just waiting for you to come to him. Yes, the Heavenly Father was just waiting for you to come to him like a little child with nothing but yourself to receive the complete and true blessing of your Heavenly Parent. May you receive this gift, this blessing, like a little child. Peace be with you.
Sovereign God, you make us for each other to live in loving community as friends, sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, wives and husbands. Teach us to choose love that is committed and devoted. Teach us like little children to wander and to trust that our loving may reflect the image of Christ. Amen. And may you receive the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.